Okay, in this lab, we are going to be doing uh, an exercise on configuring syslog and NTP. Okay, so the objectives will be to configure a syslog device or service, generate logged events, manually set switch clocks, and configure NTP service. And we will verify our work and check for the time stamped logs. So here we have we are going to enable and use the syslog service and the NTP. So to enable the syslog service, you need to click the syslog server. Okay. So double click on syslog here okay and then you turn on the syslog you go to services okay please follow with me while i'm doing these steps okay. So when you click on services tab, you have the syslog. Just make sure it is turned on. Okay. You can clear log, but we don't have anything to clear as, as of now. And then you close it. So now the syslog is turned on, on our syslog server. Syslog server is where our six syslogs will be recorded. Okay. Now we are going to configure our routers to be using that syslog server. So we are going to click on our router one and then CLI. First of all, enable. Okay. Config D or config terminal. And then the command is logging and then 10.0.1.254, which is our the IP address of our logging server. As simple as that. Okay. We will do the same thing on switch one. So click on switch one, CLI, give it some time to boot up and get it. Okay, enable, config T or config terminal. And then the command is logging. And then we give the IP address of our syslog server, which is 10.0.1.254. Okay. Or we'll do the same thing on switch number two. So all our intermediary devices are configured with the syslog. So again here, enable on switch two, config terminal. And then logging 10.0.1.254. Okay. Now we need to generate some events because right now network is working fine. There's nothing. So to generate if a, a, a event, you have to reset something, restart. A device. So to do that, uh, let's configure a loopback zero interface on router one. Loopback interface, as you know, it it refers to the device itself. So if I configure a, a loopback on my router, I am referring to my router. If I ping a loopback address on my PC, then I am testing my PC network card connection or TCP/IP stack. And uh, so to do that, we go back to router one. Yeah. 
Okay, just hold on. Okay. Click on router one. Let's generate an event. So here we will do, uh, we will call the interface, the loopback interface and we shut it down, okay? Interface and loopback zero because why we are why we are shutting a loop back who can tell me because we don't want to affect the operation of our network okay and then we do a shutdown this will trigger some events okay also let's go and turn off pc1 and pc2 Click on PC1. It's taking time. Just click on the switch here. Then turn it on. You see the red light, the green light is coming. Okay. Uh, PC1 and PC2. All right. Then we switch it on. Don't forget to switch it on again, please. Now we need to go and check, is this recorded? Is this logged to our syslog server? Okay. Now we go to our syslog, click on syslog. Okay. Click on syslog. Okay, see the events. These are the messages, all right? These are the messages. But notice something. What can you notice here? Very good. Two students sitting in the front. Time stamp is not shown. Excellent. It's not showing the time, right? So we have to, how to do that? By setting the clock. Now, one more thing. We need to make sure that all our devices in the network, they are synchronized and they are using the proper and accurate time. Otherwise, this will affect the operation of the network. Okay, so this is what we will do in part three of the lab. We will manually set switch clocks, okay? Now, uh, one more thing, uh, we will clear the logs here, as we have been told. Now we go back to the switch one, and we will set up the time. Okay. To set up the clock, just exit here. Yeah. Okay, the command is clock set. We have done this command before. You can, you can use the tab also. Okay, clock set, and they want us to use this time, H047, and we have to use the exact format, okay? Okay, and then the month, 10, clock set, uh, 11, dot, uh, colon, 47, colon, 00, July. July yeah. Yes, July with an I, with a with a U, of course. Then two zero one three. Okay. Good. So now we have configured the time on our switch. Now we need to configure the logging time stab service on the switch. What does this mean? Every time there is a log, there is an entry, something happened, it is given a timestamp. So we can know when did this happen. 
because it's important. If something happened, my, my interface was shut down. I need to know when did this happen for accountability. Remember, accountability. We need to know why it happened, who's responsible. Okay, so think big, think about, about enterpri enterprise, about networks. You need to know what happened. You want to troubleshoot, you want to know, to know also who's responsible for that. So to enable this on the switch is also by using this powerful command, service timestamp, okay, log. And then we need to know what kind of information there on the time. So we will use this time timestamp, date, time, and in milliseconds, okay? Oh, there is some uh, syntax error. Uh, sorry, there is uh, service uh, time times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And millisecond yes that's a millisecond okay very good now on part four we are going to configure the ntp service okay and here we are going to to assume that the ntp ntp is being hosted on a public internet server. If the NTP was private, authentication could also be used. So here you go to the NTP server, click on the NTP server here, and then go to services. Okay. And then turn the NTP on. Just by just click here on on. That's it done. Okay. Now we have a command to automatically set the time on the router. Okay. By using our NTP. That's the benefit of having the NTP so that everyone all the devices, they should use the same in real scenario, real life. They should have the same timing. Okay? So this is the command. Oops. Router one. Okay. Service. Timestamp. Uh, we are in the interface, sorry. We have to exit from the interface here. That's why the command is, okay. Service, timestamp, timestamp, log, and then we will give the IP address of our, and, and sorry, sorry. We need to use the, we have to use this command first. Yeah, we did not enable the command yet. So first of all, we will tell the router to use our, our NTP server, and we give just the, the IP address of the NTP server. Okay, one or three, two, two, four. By the way, do you know what kind of clock is on these servers? This, these servers they use very accurate clock. Okay, very accurate. So now our router is told to use this NTP to set its time automatically. Okay. Now this next command is we need to enable the logging timestamp service on the router. 
So the command is service timestamp and then log and then like what we have done on the switch date time and m second okay all right now we need to verify our work or troubleshoot if there's a problem how do we verify we can do this by also changing again trigger an event one good way of triggering an event without affecting our network performance is by uh, shut by shutting down a loopback address. Loopback will not affect in our network here. It will not affect the performance of the routers or switches. Okay. So again, in router one, I will call the the loopback interface. Okay, and this time we'll call zero. Shut it, uh, and then we'll no shut down. So we will bring it up, then we will shut it down, OK? Because by default, it is shut down. Remember on routers? Now we will shut, OK? Let's do it one more time, so that two times. OK. Now we will go to the syslog. OK, now you see now our syslog is showing the time. Perfect. All right. And this comes an end or conclusion to this lab.